Thank you so much. Dear colleagues and friends, I'm very glad to be at this conference. Thank you for inviting me, uh, Professor Paun. I'm very glad that our cooperation started a few months ago. It's very productive and I hopefully will be for a long and long time because just by this way, we could do a lot of things. We could build this real partnership and to appropriate to each other and to build this common Europe, what we are waiting for. So my presentation today will be about Republic of Moldova, what exactly it is now. I will not speak so much about the history, but of course, to understand nowadays situation in Moldova, at least we have to look back for two centuries, what's happened in this region as a result of occupation of the Russian Empire of this territory called later Bessarabia, Guberne Bessarabia, and during 19th century and especially 20th century, when, uh, this region, Bessarabia, was part of Great Romania, and then as a result of another uh, pact, Hitler-Stalin pact, Bessarabia was occupied by Soviet Union and created the new entity called Soviet Moldavia, and of course, with a lot of problems. I'll not go deeply in such details. Probably, it's uh, we will be discuss. We will discuss later uh, if you are so much interested in our history. But what we have now, I could call divided society. Moldova, it's very divided at many from many point of view. From point of territoriality, we have this separatist region since 1990. This Transnistrian region declared independence, and now it's unrecognized entity, but of so much troubles concerning the uh, being together or just considering to be together. But then finally, we are totally different because we have the border, they have own army, they have own policy system, they all have own currency. And of course, everything is supported by Russia. Even if Russia not recognizing directly, but they have the school program, the textbooks, they are studying history of Russia, not own history. So a lot of things concerning this separatist region, which is not real, uh, in favor of building statehood to build an integrated state, or about the history, about the values, about the rights, concerning the economic and culture and identity issues. Also, the society is divided because it's looking from different perspectives, not from the perspective of being together, of being part of own uh, or one country, one citizenship. So I will give you just a few examples why we are so much divided and why we are not so much succeed in developing this young uh, country of so fragile democracy and uncertain citizenship. So the language question, of course, this is not just in the Republic of Moldova. We have in Europe many other similar cases concerning the language, how to call the language or the, to, to find the differences and build another language based on different identical and ethnical issues. So during the Soviet time, it was built a concept of Moldovan language totally different than Romanian it is. And uh, we, during the Soviet time, uh, we, we use Cyrillic alphabet, but since 1991, we returned to Latin one and trying to use real Romanian language rules, and we have the curricula, which is called uh, Romanian language, but still today, a part of society is considering the language is Moldovan and is different language than Romanian is. Or somebody is considering that in Moldova, the language is Moldovan, and Moldova itself, of course, is different than uh, Romania is. Uh, so, history. I Okay, of course, we have a, a lot of examples concerning the history teaching, the history education, and the history itself as academic issue. In Moldova, during the last 25 years, Moldovan society is fighting for the history, to teach, to learn own history. And we have a lot of intervention in history, especially uh, in 1995, when the government tried to change from Romanian's history to the history of Moldova, and society reacted and protested three months on the street just to protect the national history. In 2001, or between 2001 and 2009, when the communist government was trying again to change the history curricula, the protests were very large. And you could see the young people, the citizens coming in the street and asking, don't touch our history or give our history back. So you could see how sensitive it's history issue and the history education in Moldova. So of course it's linked to the identity. And now society of course is divided because probably this Soviet legacy, Soviet mentality, and Soviet projects, which still today influence the mentality and attitude of people in the Republic of Moldova. And you could see some pictures of citizens which are representing such important social uh, areas from the Republic of Moldova. One is considering themselves 
as Romanians and supporting Romanian language, Romanian identity, and another part are considering themselves Moldovans and trying still today to write with Cyrillic alphabet. And you could see this is a former member of the Communist Party and participated very active in this campaign of supporting Moldovanism in Moldovan society. And he has, I'm Moldovan, I'm speaking Moldovan language. With Cyrillic alphabet, with this accent of real or trying to build uh, real uh, differences. So speaking about the ethnical situation in Moldova, we have the official data from 2004. So you could see now the distribution by ethnic groups. The last census happened two years ago in 2014. But until today, the government didn't publish the results. And now, of course, we have many questions. Why? I could say a few words about 2004, and you could see Romanians declared as Romanians just 2.2. But the communists at that time asked the participant in the census to not put your identity or to not ask the question who you are or which identity you represent. And it was automatically just marked that you are Moldovan. And just people, especially the academics or especially uh, from the uh, educational system, insisted, and please, where it's, it's a mention about the identity, put myself as Romanian. And I will give you just one example uh, about uh, um, this identity issue and uh, the, the citizenship. So in 1997, when I applied for the new ID, and I was to the office and asking to complete the, 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 the formula, and when it was the, the rubrica of the identity, automatically the lady put Moldovan. And I said, look, in my birth, birthday certificate, it's mentioned Romanian because my grandparents, my parents are mentioned too. So just, and he cut the word Moldovan and wrote, by insistence, Romanians. So I don't want to insist on my identity. I just would like to ask you to respect my identity. I'm not, not nationalist. I'm just normal citizen. And just ask the lady to respect my identity. So concerning the citizenship, in Moldova we have the law about the double citizenship. And of course, part of society who are Romanians, of their Romanians' relatives or roots, they are applying for Romanian citizenship. But we have another part of society, Russians, who are applying for Russian citizenship. We have the biggest ethnic group, minority group, are Ukrainians. And they, of course, they applied for Ukrainian past. Um, now it's not so popular to be Ukrainian, and many of them are trying to apply for, uh, for Romanian passport. It's much easy, of course, to be European and to travel. So most of people, and of course, we have Bulgarians applying for Bulgarian citizenship. We have Gagauzian applying for Turkish citizenship. Some of people in Moldova, and I know the cases, they have three, four passports, which of course is illegal, first of all. But I think the main problem is to understand the role, the right, and respect of citizenship when you are applying for this. Most of them are applying, of course, from pragmatical issues, to have the way, to have the chance to travel, to have the way uh, to get the jobs uh, in the EU and other uh, things. So, state building. We started in 1991 as a result of collapse of Soviet Union, and of course, it was a very promising future. But in finally, after 25 years, we are dominated by oligarch party, by oligarch guys, and we have a lot of troubles. Even if we cite a few years ago the association agreement, even if, even if, uh, if we have this no visa uh, in Europe and other important things. So um, the homeland itself, it's divided, not just territorially, but the approach to understand the being part of this homeland. Part of society is considered that my homeland is Republic of Moldova. But another part, and especially the Russian speakers and the left party's leaders are considering they are part of this pro-Russia, pro-Eurasian uh, region. And of course, most of them are living in the past. They're considering still today that the, our homeland is Soviet Union, so, which is not so easy to understand. And these two different approaches to the History to the, the, the uh, building, the statehood, part of society is considering Bessarabia is Romanian land or Romanian part or Romanian region. Part of society is considering Moldova is Romania, but we have another part of society which are considering that Moldova, this is Russian land, and this is part of the Russian legacy. Um, just another picture from the street. You could see a guy 
very extremist guys who are fighting against Romani Romanian movement and just stop Romanian Romanization or stop uh, this issue of considering Moldova as part of Romania. So uh, many times we are discussing about no state project, so no vision about the future. Communist government tried in 2003 to build uh, this concept of the state building, but the most part of the concept of the law are based on Soviet historiography. So which is not looking to the future, but looking to the past, to build something which is not efficient and people cannot understand. And then finally, this law now, it's, it's just, just a paper. So um, the President Voronin in 2010, for example, uh, did a declaration which is very strange. 10 millions of Moldovans who are living in Romania are, uh, so the, the, the rights of these uh, citizens are, um, not respected because they're Moldovans, but the uh, Romanian government not respecting the identity of Moldovans from this part. So it's, I think it's a stupid uh, approach, but anyway, it was the political guy who declared something against Romania. So uh, also a few years ago, uh, another, uh, let's say, uh, political scientist declared that the name of Republic of Moldova should be changed in the Eastern Republic of Moldova. He, and this guy is pro-Romanian, pro, let's say pro-democratic. And another guy is pro-Russian. He was the former deputy in, in uh, uh, Moldovan parliament from the Communist Party. And he said, he said this is uh, diversion against uh, uh, Romania. So uh, what we have in finally, I think it's a weak state in crisis of values because to build a state and to try to uh, invent some, some values is not so easy, you could see the Moldovan flag, which is very close to Romanian. You could see the Romanian uh, and Moldovan symbols, the stem, which is very appropriate to each other. At the beginning of our independence, we have the same uh, anthem like Romania has. So you could see how appropriate we are and how it's not so, not so easy to build own values who could be a part, which could be part, of course, of entity. And now, something which is also very symbolic, Moldovan currency. Just look on this and try to find the differences from the Soviet ruble to the Moldovan lei, not Romanian, it's Moldovan. We have the same name of the currency. So you could see the design of the Moldovan lei very close to the Soviet ruble. And I think it's a huge mistake when they build this new system of the new currency and the new design of Moldovan lei. They changed the head of Lenin, of, of the head of the Stefan the Great, but this not solved the question about this moving to the democratic way of Republic of Moldova and trying to... So part of society, it's calling the Jos Communismo, so the communist down, and we would like to stop the communism in Moldova. But another part of society are considering if you are speaking about Anti-communism, they are linking anti-communism to the fascism, not anti-fascism. So I was the member of the Truth Commission for the condemning of the communist crimes in the Republic of Moldova. I could say a lot of things concerning activity of this commission, but just, just this picture is showing the attitude of society, how they are reacting when we are trying to speak about the past, about the communist crimes. And we have many other examples concerning the wars of memory or memory of wars. For example, how 9th of May, it's, it, it's in Moldova. Part of society is trying to, it's a, a victory day against Nazi, and another part of society, more open, more democratic, are trying to celebrate European Day. So a few other things just to, um, for example, Transnistrian region. We could discuss a lot of things of this situation now, but I'll give you just one example from the history textbooks of 21st century. It's a, eight, nine grade history textbooks, and on topic concerning the war in 1992. You could see a picture from this war, and the message of these pictures, it's very dangerous. Death to the Romanian cannibals. And nobody reacted. I tried to, to say and to pay attention to this discourse in Transnistrian schools and then you, uh, a young generation, it's educated in this style of this approach. No reaction from the Bucharest, no reaction from Chisinau. And it's very bad because that young generation in Transnistria is educated in this style. And everything from Romania or everything from the West is dangerous for them, which I think it's, 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 it's a specific one. So now, just a few things concerning the future of Moldova. A lot of nostalgic people, and we have the surveys last 10, 15 years, and more than 
half of society, or let's say 35 until 50% of society are looking to the back. It's the best system of Moldova or the future, it's the Soviet one. And just two days ago, the new survey about the uh, level of life in Moldova, which is very bad, you could see that 45% of population considering that during the Soviet oil time was better because now they're living in very worse conditions and situations, the salaries are better. So, um, now another thing about the directions. A few examples. The wrong direction and this percentage, it's, it's increasing. 88% of population considering that we are on the wrong way. So this is. And another question concerning the future to EU or EuroAsia. So in November, 42% supported the uh, idea of uh, EU. And now, two days ago, you could see just 35% of Moldovan society are supporting EU idea and 39% are in favor of this Eurasian or the Putin initiative, which is, I think, dangerous. And concerning the, the, uh, the union of Romania, because it's very actual, just 21% of society are in favor of this idea and 53 are against. So the project, of course, also, and concerning the, the let's say, political area, also two days ago, we got the results and most of population are supporting the left parties and socialist, communist are still on this more or less active segment of population, including this new party. So I will end with this, uh, I'll quote, we could move Republic of Moldova from the Soviet Union, but the most important thing is how to move Soviet Union from Republic of Moldova. I think the, the biggest problem for Moldovan society, of course, is this problem. We cannot move from this Soviet legacy and to try to open mind and to think for the future, to have a really clear vision. And I think European Union, Germany, Romania has to be more, let's say, pragmatic and discussing of our politicians about the future. What exactly do they want? And to try to put the really clear conditions. Even with this bad situation, Moldova is open country, and we have a very nice wine, we have a very nice uh, kitchen, and we have a very nice people. So you are welcome to visit Moldova.